And the New York Times is reporting that Rudy Giuliani was asking for $20,000 a day to do legal work on this for the president. They got that from multiple people who were briefed on the matter, according to the Times. Uh, Giuliani, when reached by the Times, strenuously denied that. There's also a lot of very pertinent questions right now, Matt, about uh, what the Trump campaign is actually doing with the money that they're raising from voters like the one uh, that Mora spoke with, whether they're using it to these for these legal cases or they're using it to pay down substantial campaign debt. Yeah, so if you look at the fine print for these solicitations, when, when the Trump campaign is asking for money for these lawsuits, the money is not necessarily going to these legal uh, and recount fights. It, it could be going, for example, to the president's new leadership pack. It could be going to the president's uh, general election debt. So it may be a little bit of a bait and switch for his most ardent supporters with money being siphoned off to go for other purposes when they think it's to help him fight out this legal battle. Well, the, the, the legal battles that he is fighting across the country, is there a single one at this point from what we've seen so far? And forgive me, I was off yesterday, so maybe something came up that has any merit that might change the outcome of the election. Yeah, so I think the suits uh, fall into two categories. One is uh, procedural lawsuits that would affect only small batches of ballots. And then the other are these big kind of wild swings that assert that that something untoward or uh, un, un, uh, not according to the rules happened with election officials. And I, I think we've seen the results and they speak for themselves. We have over 20 lawsuits that have been filed. Uh, they've only won one. The rest they've had to uh, withdraw or they've been dismissed. And so this isn't really a, a, a coherent legal strategy. This isn't the disciplined effort that we would see, uh, that we saw 20 years ago in Bush v. Gore. This is really a scattershot effort that seemed as much, you know, about shifting blame away from the president for his very predictable yeah. failure at the top of the ticket and onto election administrators, which I, I think is unfortunate. Matthew, how much longer is this going to last? Well, I, I think it could go on for some time, and I don't think the passage of, of time or even the inauguration of uh, President-elect Biden really ends this whole episode of you know discussing the stolen uh, 2020 election. I, I think ultimately this ends when Republicans muster some political courage, and it will take Republicans ultimately saying to the president, you know, you should come back next time and maybe bring a, a political message and strategy that will actually finish first. And, and until they recognize that this was a clear loss, uh, I, I see these lawsuits and certainly statements about the stolen 2020 election uh, continuing on, maybe even becoming a political litmus test yeah. for conservatives. Yeah, in addition to the Electoral College, Joe Biden is now leading the president by more than 5 million votes nationally. Matt Sanderson, thanks so much for joining us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.